Hey, what's up? Thought I'd do something with custom actions real quick. So, in my tutorial project, which is getting old, I really need to update this thing. I don't have a whole lot of third party script stuff per se, but I do have Emerald AI. So, I brought that in. Or, <coughs> it was already in. I didn't bring it in. And I wanted to show. How easy it is I guess to make custom actions so this is just a demo and I have a companion here and we run around and he sees an enemy or something they attack it, it demo showing the companion system or something like that so let's quickly make um, two buttons real quick I'm just going to stick this over to oh, it is on scale screen size so let's call this one uh, passive and this one companion Alright, so we have these two buttons. So we need an action. So I'm going to go to Tools, Custom Action Wizard, and we'll say Emerald AI. Yeah, and you can name this whatever you want. Uh, change Behavior. Give it a folder, any folder you want. I'm just going to use my default broken folder. So it creates a C sharp or a script, right? Which is this is what the action is. If I open that, and it's it's important to know that everything is based on components. This is the entire point of the mono behavior world. Um, for example, when you add force to an object, you're adding force to that object's rigid body. When you're translating it, you're you're adding <coughs> a special method in the transform component, right? Like if we look at anything here, but every component can do stuff, right? Like the animator can do stuff, obviously. Uh, audio sources can do stuff. The nav mesh agent does stuff. You know the rigid bodies, but the those are the components that a lot of these actions are actually talking to on game objects. When you bring in third party though, like what the hell is an Emerald AI system script? Like Playmaker has no idea what the hell that is. <coughs> and you can use the get set properties and it's a reflection code. It's slower than actions. Um, see I, I can get properties of it and stuff like that and you have, it, it it's kind of a messy ugly way to do anything and if you build especially for Google Play then it won't work uh, or the odds are it won't work because for Google Play you have to build in IL2 CPP and that doesn't like the get set call method from those actions so anyways if we look at our script I'm going to delete that so <clears throat> there's, there's a couple different ways to do this and I'm going to try to do this as, as painless as possible so we could use an FSM owner default which is the same thing as an FSM game object uh, but it has the option to use owner, so it's kind of a nicer one, right? And old is I need a public FSM owner default, which is the type, which is why it's blue. It needs a name. I can call it anything. I can call it that. Now, <clears throat> for simplicity's sake, we also want to talk to a certain script. So, for example to change the behavior I just happen to know that the behavior is under uh, Emerald AI you 
event manager something like that we'll find out right and I'm gonna get these things these uh, issues so I have to be using like the namespace well I guess I don't have to be I, I could I could actually type it out here too but <clears throat> so I'm using it so now I can I can understand what the script is so we'll give it a name call it whatever you want and I made it private because there's no need to put it as a public thing you you can uh, I just I don't find the need for it so this is the script we want to talk to so the other thing we need is a uh, the enum uh, what is that going to be called uh, let's check down here let's go into the manager and say change behavior that guy that's the one I want so we need a public FSM enum, and we're going to call this our behavior. Now that could be any enum, and an enum is kind of like a multi-phase pool, I guess you could say. So I want to define um, uh, what this enum is. So it's going to be an object type because everything is an object type. Type of that same thing. All right, now I can get rid of that. I need that. <clears throat> All right, so now we can set a behavior which is going to default to this behavior. So with that said, um, we need to kind of load this variable so we need <coughs> essentially to have manager is equal to uh, now if, if you had a normal game object I'll show you this real quick and why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it um, You would you would just do a test dot value dot get component of that type. Now, because we're using the owner default thing, we have a slightly different method. We have to go fsm dot get owner default target. The variable we're talking about is the demo. Right now, it's it's got a red line, and if I mouse over it, it says because it wants. It says a game object to an Emerald AI events manager object. They aren't the same. This isn't going to work. So on this game object, we want to get this component. So we're going to do get component. Uh, and we want the Emerald AI events manager it's a method so we do that to it and do that and now we have loaded our variable so now now this is on the enter this isn't the update if you want to do things in the update you need to make an update method such as that you don't need the base get rid of that and you can do things in here <clears throat> I'm just gonna do it on the enter so manager dot change behavior now this is a method right and if you noticed if I go into it um, all these are the things that that script can do right so there's a lot of different things I can do um, walk up footsteps sounds I can change the sounds set destinations, set faction levels, set follower targets, um, <clears throat> kill the AI, whatever. There, there's a ton of different things you can do. But like I said, in, in our case, I just want to change behavior. So I open it up and it needs 
uh, this stuff. And that's because if I look into the script, this is the Emerald AI script, this public void here, change behavior wants, what behavior do we need? And a bool, uh, and because it's got this, we don't actually have to fill it out, uh, but we can. And then it's going to change the behavior for us, more or less. So all we have to do is say that is behavior dot value. Now we have uh, enum to this, the other type of enum, so. I'm going to put in extra brackets in front of it. I'm actually going to copy this, paste it in there. And that's just telling it that, hey, yeah, this is this variable. This is this type of variable. This, this fits. And then that's it. That's all I'm going to do. So now I'm just going to save. Alright, so let's go into our companion, which I don't have to, I can actually put this on the canvas, I can, I can put this anywhere, because we're using that user owner default stuff. So let's add a playmaker, and let's add two events. Let's go um, passive, and companion. Let's just stick them like this. This will just make it easy. All right, so we go into our little folder. And we say, oh, there's our action. And yeah, we, we don't worry about the task sound. That shouldn't be there anymore. And we can now select our things because we told it that it's this type of enum, right? So if this is our companion, let's select companion and over here. Let's tell this one to be passive. All right, cool. So under the buttons, and this one was the passive. Um, you know what? Let's just put it down here. Let's just link those over like that. And this can use a button array. And we have two buttons. We have our passive. And then we're going to have our companion button. That's it. That's all we're going to do. So our little action here, if I click those buttons, should change the behavior of this AI. That is a, a custom action of behavior changing. Right? So if I go passive, you can see it fired. So he should now be just in a passive mode. All right? He's wandering around doing his thing. If I go companion, he's going to follow me again. And if we find an enemy, there's an enemy and I go passive, I don't know if he'll stop attacking, but yeah, he's he's all screwed up now, right? Because I, I I didn't clear his target or anything, so he's like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? And if I go companion again, he's gonna go full fledged crazy on this whatever color thing is. If I go passive, he's gonna stop and just stand there, all stupid, right? So we successfully change the behavior with a custom action. And because of the way I did it, we can also tech this could also be a variable. And that variable happens to also now be the same thing. Right? <coughs> so the other thing we could do real quick, and I will show you this, is let's do another one. Let's say
right? So we were so we went into the Emerald AI Events Manager with that one. And this time let's go into the Emerald AI System, which is where you have a lot more of things like the its health and so forth. And it, and it like I said, and if you want to know what's in there, um, kind of in, like like if you have numerous scripts, like like say like this one is you know there's five or six scripts on the thing, and there's some third-party assets like man you get like 10 12 different scripts on something you're like holy crap I want to you know control the movement or something but which script am I going in it's all crazy and if I kind of wanted to just cheat a little and find out what's in what um, I could just drag this guy in and say you know do the get properties or call methods like for example call method and I can see okay here's the methods wander follow companion target so I can give it a new target uh, choose the next waypoint generate a waypoint uh, send the damage you know or I can you know what properties do we have Oop. and we can see all the properties here just this big massive list so those are all things that's inside this script right so again same idea and easiest thing to do is just copy and paste right like I can take this guy copy him paste him now we need a private emerald AI system we'll just call it system I guess and again it has the red line because it's got an error because it doesn't know what that is so we're using Emerald AI and it looks at alternatively if you didn't have that and you had this issue you also could technically say Emerald AI dot um, the Emerald AI system does the same thing but now like if you if you have if you're trying to talk to all of them you have to do this to all of them where this is more of a global way of, of getting rid of this it's kind of part of the address you know so system equals FSM get Order default target demo dot get component and we want the emerald AI system this time. Alright, so let's say let's do a public FSM int and call it current health and public FSM int cause damage. All right, so <clears throat> and just like the way actions are in states, everything is executed top to bottom. So, for example, uh, if I take current health dot value, we're just we're not talking about if it was a normal int, like a public int, current health would be the int. But we're not because in playmaker it, it's a special variable type right so so we're not talking about the current health we're talking the value of what's in current health which is why we have this little value thing so it equals system dot oh, current health right there perfect and let's do uh, system damage there just happens to be one called damage. I don't know if that's a proper damage one, but we're going to use it anyways. So the damage mount, we're going to do the cause damage dot value and target type dot will say, I don't know, AI, sure, whatever you can call it, player, doesn't really matter, whatever. We'll just call it good like that. So we're going to get the health and then we're going to cause the damage, which means that 
the health won't update the damage that happens in this frame, right? Because it's happening above this guy. So if I actually just drag and move him, then we're going to cause damage and see the health. And if I, where should we put that? We have to wait for it to compile. Compiling. All right, so get rid of that. Go down to our folder. That's not my folder. B is before C. That's why I shouldn't have dropped out of school. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to damage. So we can say it's health. We can. We can. We don't have to use a variable here. We'll, we'll use uh, whatever. And we'll cause. I don't know. Say 100 damage. So let's, so we can see, actually, you know what, let's, let's do it this way. Let's, yeah, no, let's just hit play. Screw it. Let's just see what happens. All right. So we can see anytime now, there we go. He's got 2000 health, All right? All right. So let's come out of full maximized play here. Um, and if I hit the passive, technically, we should go here and then come back into here, which is actually going to cause damage, right? So we can now see he's got 1,900 health. We have caused 100 damage. And every time we switch that, it's going to happen. We're causing damage through our little action. And we've killed him. But there now we have a damage emerald AI. So pretty simple for an action. And we also have the current health. And like I said, if you if you wanted to get the current health in the update loop, other than just the on enter, you just move that line of code into the update loop. Right. <clears throat> uh, but anyways, there there's there's some little bit of information on how we deal with custom actions. Like I said, everything is component based. Everything has stuff in it. Right? everything and you can make custom actions and now these are more basic custom actions and things can get a lot more complex but uh, I don't know you could do on the animator uh, different well doing all the parameters uh, the re the reset trigger that's not an action I don't know why no one is I mean, I, I think I've made action. I think so. I've just seen an action there the other day. But I mean, we could reset the trigger. We could make an action for the animator to reset a trigger, right? Because there isn't a default action in Playmaker right now to do that. And it would actually be kind of relatively useful. Um, but there's all sorts of little things in here you can do. You can get properties, set properties, um, apply root motion. No, change speeds but every component does stuff right colliders do stuff right I can get properties I can get the attached rigid bodies I can get its center its sizing is it a trigger its material its size now the other cool thing which is also there should be an action for there's not if you call method I can say the closest point uh, especially on bounds I can give it a position here, a vector, like say if I ray cast, let's go to our guy, right, he's using a big ugly stupid box collider because that's the way Emerald's set up, I don't know why, um, but technically if, if I were to ray cast and hit right here, and if I wanted to know where on this collider would be the closest point, I could put my ray cast position into here and right here will pump out the position closest on this collider to uh, our mouse or our ray cast right really really useful <coughs> um, if you're doing a combat system and say you're using triggers because if you're using physics you can get the contact point triggers you can't but triggers you can get 
uh, the collider and call the closest point on bounds and now we can get the point here closest point to say like your weapon and now we have a now we have a, a vector that we can spawn our blood particle at for example <laughs> but it's a trigger we're not dealing with the rigid body which is it's got performance issues and it's just a pain in the ass to deal with but every every component does stuff and most of the stuff like this type of stuff is default playmaker but this stuff isn't right <clears throat> so but making those actions is pretty easy to do like there's nav mesh ones you'll notice a lot of these look familiar right we have actions with like these same names right because that's all the action is doing in reality I can even call actions on an FSM right <clears throat> tell it to reset um, set set state on the string change state send events to it so there are there there's some information on some simple stuff more of the basics on how we can do custom actions and custom actions are a great way for anyone to start learning how to code that's that's literally how I learned how to code is just by making uh, custom actions to start off with I literally knew absolutely nothing I knew, I knew shell and creating custom actions I very very rapidly within like weeks of making custom actions I started getting the hang of <clears throat> going into a component calling a method getting a uh, you know a parameter or changing a parameter or whatever the case is and that just led over to <clears throat> more deeper stuff and it just kind of goes deeper and deeper and then you start getting into interfaces and all sorts of fun stuff but it is it is a really great way really fast way to learn coding right you kind of learn your playmaker end of it you know you're getting pretty decent with playmaker start developing your own custom actions you know if you have an asset whatever it is ai controllers whatever doesn't matter everything's the same the only thing is if it's a private field you won't see it you won't have access to it so you might have to go into your script and change it from private to public right often good coding is you have a lot of private stuff like you usually it's built in a way that you don't want every loopy loo to go in there and change everything right <coughs> but I believe most things in Emerald are public right so they're they can be accessed from the outside right because if, if I even right here if I hit private there now nothing can access this method that isn't in this script right where now everything playmaker and everything can call this method um, but it's it's the same thing with properties too right like if you have variables we have variables somewhere in here and they got a whole whack of variables not as nicely set up as playmakers variables and there's a shit ton of variables in the emerald system just a ton of variables crazy amounts right but these are all public so we can get access to those if these were private you wouldn't see that in your actions if you wanted to see it, you'd have to make it public but there's a ton of variables a ton of stuff there which also <clears throat> keep that in mind if you're ever making AI um, you know like in where, where we have like a simple state where we're doing site detection oh we've seen a player we make a state chase the player oh we're in, within X range go to another state attack the player you know have a couple other states there and you got like five states and like four variables very simple um, <clears throat> keep that in mind when you're looking at stuff like this um, if you if you do ever want to start building 
more complex things like I mean this is this is excessive on the variables but look how many variables are in that script right and then the methods oh there's a whole crap ton of more variables and those are all variables that's all variables variables more variables all variables layer mask variables now we're into the methods right and you could do a lot of this um, like a lot of this if, if not all of it like you could pretty much recreate this whole system probably with <coughs> two or three templates a couple FSM's a couple dozen variables but still uh, there's there's a lot here so it it, it takes a lot I won't bother saving that. Anyway, so there is custom actions. 